Welcome back to another Olive video editing tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating a picture slideshow using still images, and then we'll add music to it and do some different trans uh, transitions. But the big thing we're going to learn here is how to format our video to the correct size that we want, and also how to format our images um, within Olive so that they fit within the frame without bars on the side or on the top. Um, so we see this image here is a kind of a vertical image of this tiger. So it's gonna have bars on the side. If we just drag it in right now and keep it full size, it's going to be, well, let's do a couple things. Let's see what, what it does. So I drag this down to the timeline and it's in our, it's called sequence zero one. It created a new video sequence for us and it put that sequence, we kind of talked about this a little bit, put the sequence over here in our project area and we see some information about it. It's 29.97 frames per second. The dimension, the size of our video is now 1280 wide by 10 by 1920 pixels tall. So this video is going to be formatted for kind of more like a phone. Um, it's, it's kind of an odd dimension. It's a, it's a normal dimension for a picture, but it's an odd dimension for a video. So what it does, it assumed our frame rate and then it took the image, the size of our image, and it's, it assumes we want that to be the size of our video. So for example, if we delete this, we come over here and delete our sequence again and we bring in this other image, there's a smaller one here. This one is 1280 by 720. 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall. So that is kind of like the resolution we want. Uh, not the resolution, that's the size we want, but um, that's not the resolution we want. We can bring it down, and now we see in our project, it is, oh, where's our project? Here it is, sequence one. So now it's 1280 wide by 720 tall. It's still 29.97 frames per second. We can change this. So we can go over here and right click and go to properties and it brings up this dialogue. So we can change this to 1920 by 1080. And we can change the frame rate to like 60 frames per second. So the frames don't really matter for a still image, right? Because that's how many times it flashes every second. But uh, if we have any transitions, 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 or if we have any like panning in or panning out, that's going to happen at 60 frames per second. So it's important. I would say if you're doing a slideshow, always do 60 frames per second and 1920 by 1080, unless you're worried about um, your video size, unless size is a factor for you. So, and then we can rename this and call this uh, my slideshow. This, this is not the name of our, of our project file, but it's the name of our sequence, our video sequence. So now we can see what this looks like. We see our picture is much smaller than our video right now. And that's because our picture is, uh, what is it, 12, 1280 by 720, but our slideshow, our actual video that's going to be rendered is gonna be 1920 by 1080. So we need to increase the size of this picture. So to do that, we can click on it, click over here under effects, and we can just change the size of that. Let me scale this, move this over here a little bit. So we can, uh, we can change the size of this by just going to scale and holding down and we can increase the size. And also we're gonna need to change the position. We can left click and hold to change the position of this and get it kind of to where we want. So we can put it right there. That looks pretty good. It isn't going, it is gonna be, uh, have a little bit of clarity lost. will be a little bit pixelated in the clouds, but people probably won't notice. It's always good to use media for your slideshow that's the same resolution or higher than your video. So 1920 by 1080 or higher in our case. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And we can we could apply rotation. We could do some different things if we wanted to to this. So we'll keep this right here like that. Let's grab another piece of media. So we'll, maybe we'll just start at the top here. Well, let's do this butterfly one first. So the butterfly, even though, so now that we brought it in, it's not going to affect our sequence because the first clip you bring in kind of sets the standard for your sequence. If you bring in a video clip that's 60 frames per second, your project, your your video sequence is going to be at 60 frames per second. And when you go to render your video, it's going to do it at 60 frames per second. Uh, and and uh, like I said, and that's why when we bring in our first one, it sets the standard for the size. And if it's not what we want, we can go in and edit it manually in the properties. But if it is what we want, then we just leave it how it is. But the second clip doesn't really affect anything at all because the, stand, the standard has already been set. Okay, let's come over here, bring the playhead to this one. That looks pretty good. If anything, I might just change the position down a little bit by doing this. I could also click in here and move it. But then left to right, I create a bar. So I might not want to do that. Let's just go restore to default on the horizontal axis 
and then just move it down. Perfect. Okay, I'll bring in this other one. We have this picture here we'll bring in. Looks great, not gonna change it at all. And then we'll bring in this. Uh, so this is just a image, the, the logo icon for the Olive Video Editor. And it's against, it's gonna overlay it over top of transparency. It appears to be black, but it's really transparency. Meaning if we were to bring it over top of this clip on a different track, we'd see that. And maybe we want that. Maybe let's, let's put that one in line with this one. And let's move it to the bottom right hand corner. It, actually, let's do this. Let's have this be on, on the whole thing as like a watermark. We'll keep it right there. We'll click and drag this to the beginning. And then we'll extend this out to the end of our slideshow, wherever that is. So this will be on every clip. When we play, it'll appear here in the corner of every, as like a watermark or something. Okay, let's grab, uh, let's just do a couple more pictures here and then we'll get into transitions. Oh, I overwrote it there. So I need to make sure I don't do that. Uh, this tiger one's gonna be a little bit of a challenge for us. So this one looks good. This tiger, it kind of did zoom in a little bit by default. And what we can do, we can right click and go to uh, this auto scale. And auto scale will automatically scale it to the full so we don't lose any of our picture. But it does create some black bars on the side, which we probably don't want. So maybe we'll come in and actually just change the scale of this. Oh, I have the wrong thing selected. Let's make sure our uh, tiger selected. Mm, that shouldn't happen. Okay, there we go. So let's come over here, get rid of those black bars. And then we'll lower this down as well. But the selection's a little bit weird. For some reason, the, the selection's there. That's kind of a glitch, I think, or maybe I'm just not doing it correctly. But So we'll just move the tiger down like that. See, our all of its logo is selected, even though that clip is not selected. So I don't like that. All right, that's probably enough there. Let's make this go toward, let's end that at the end. And let's bring in, I have this audio track here, this more jazz guitar we can play. Just see what this sounds like. So we'll drag this down and... Uh, Put it on this audio track here and so it, this audio is a little bit longer than the end so we'll make it end right with the same time too and then we're gonna want to let's actually make all these the, about the same so we can we'll grab this uh ripple tool that we oh, where's the ripple right there so we can adjust this and make the whole thing come down so they're all about the same time they all appear for approximately two seconds then we'll have this go there and we'll have this go here Apologize if this is getting, this feels like it's getting turning into a longer tutorial, but I just kind of kind of want to do the whole start to finish process so you kind of see my workflow and hopefully learn something in the process. All right, so now we have this whole thing with music. Let's just watch it real quick and see. We have hard cut transitions, no pan in, no pan out, and that's it. Then it ends. So let's first of all, let's take our audio clip and let's do a transition. We can right click. Uh, and go add default transition, or we can come up here uh, while it's selected, and we can add a transition this way. Let's just do a linear fade in and out over maybe two seconds on each one. 30. Let's make this two. So we'll raise that up to roughly two, and do this up to roughly two as well. We can also come over and change that in here, and two might be too much actually now that I look at it. Let's do a very quick fade in on the start, and then the end can kind of fade out slowly. Perfect. So now we'll hear a fade out. Okay, and now we need to do, also do transitions to all of our images. We can do them one at a time by selecting it, coming up here and adding this cross dissolve, which again is the only transition available at this point in time, but don't worry, there'll be more in the future. We can do one at a time, or if we hold down the shift key and select, uh, oh, I guess shift, we can just have to do one at a time. And control also does that. We have all of these selected and then we can just add cross dissolve to all of them. And so now we have a nice little cross dissolve. So now our slideshow will look something like this. It'll come in and out, and it's kind of dissolving to that background. It it's, appears to be black, but it's really just a transparency. It'll, it'll be black in our rendered video, but if we were to have something underneath that, that would be changing. And then, we're, and then does that make it look a little bit strange? Maybe we also need to have a cross dissolve on this. I'll just right click and go default transition. That way, this will also fade out uniformly with the picture, the logo will. Okay, well, that's a quick little thing. Okay, let's look at a little bit on panning. So we haven't touched on this yet, 
but let's look at how we would pan in a picture if we wanted to. So maybe uh, let's grab, let's try this last one, I guess, this tiger. So what we would do is we come over here and we go to, actually we can do it on the transform. So we already applied a transform to this, but what we do is we come over to the very beginning of it and we'll touch more on this in the next video because this is key framing. So we come to the very first of it and we say, we want the scale to be set right where it is right here. So we click this button. We've just set a key frame there. And there's actually some more options here we can see with that. Uh, and then we're gonna come over and say, by the end of this, we would like the size to be, and we can't really see because of our transition. We can turn our transition off for a second, the closing. Do I have the right clip selected? Yeah, I do. Now well, it shouldn't be showing that. But uh, we'll just hover right here and we can say by the end, we'd like this to be maybe zoomed in to about there. So now what that's gonna do is every point, we're, see we're zooming in there. So every point, it kind of zooms it in 60 frames per second. It does this little zoom in. So we can do that on other ones too. So maybe actually this one we should have done differently. This one, let's not do the scale. So if we want to remove this, we just click on that and it, un it asks us and says, you're saving the keyframe. So it's not going to do that transition anymore or that uh, zoom in. Instead, let's, let's set the keyframe on position. So we click the keyframes. Oh, let's unclick it and make sure we're at the right part of our video clip. I want the keyframes to start at the beginning of the clip. So we'll click here. And then I'm going to change the um, vertical. Well, we'll leave it constant there. And then by the time it gets to the end, let's have it be uh, like this. So that's gonna go from top to bottom like that. I probably should have done a video on this beforehand, but if it's hazy on that this last part of the keyframes and how that works, um, check out the next video. It will clear that up a little bit. We could apply the same thing to all of them now. I could just copy this transform. Oh, actually I can't, I can't really do that. So instead, let's come over here to the first one and let's pan in a little bit on this one. So we select it and then we go to the beginning and we go to keyframe. I should have done this before I did the fade in and fade out because that's throwing me off a little bit. Oh, there we go. Take it off and then we'll uh, keyframe the scale at the beginning, go to the end of the clip I'm right in between, I think is why. Go to the end of the clip and we'll zoom in, maybe like this. Perfect. And then we'll turn these back on. So this is like super fast speed, like faster than that, and I would definitely want to do it. But this one, we can just have it be a scale and have it end in at a tiny bit more. Same thing with this one. Set the keyframe, go to the end, zoom it in a little bit, and then this one as well. Set the keyframe, go to the end, zoom in a little bit. Perfect, so now here's what our slideshow looks like. Okay, well, I hope I didn't just kind of confuse things. I think Olive in the future might create a little bit more of an easier way to do it, but this is this is the way with a lot of software that you do it, you set these key frames. And so and check out the next video if that last part kind of confused you a little bit, we'll dive more into key frames. But that's how, how we would do it. And then we just export this by going to uh, File, and we go to Export, and it brings up this dialog. I'm gonna change my quality here to 18. And then we'll keep this at 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. That's what we set in our sequence, that information. And all the rest of this, I'm gonna leave the same, but you can change it if you feel comfortable changing some of that. And I'll hit export and then name it what I wanna call it. So I'll call it slide and hit save. This will take not too long to render. I'll pause the video till it's done though. Okay, that's done rendering now. So I will go to the location on my computer where it's at which I put it under videos, I think, and it's this uh, slide is what I called it. So here's the final video and what it looks like rendered.
All right, guys. And the size of this, just in case you're curious, it's not going to be too large. So it's eight, yeah, eight megabytes. So this is, you know, doable to upload to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or whatever you want to, wherever you want to share it or burn it to a DVD or whatever. So uh, hopefully you found that video informative. Go ahead and leave your questions or comments below if you have any, and we'll catch you in the next video.